So, next great talk is from the uh, University of Osnabrück, given by Matthäus Ferraz, Birte Friesel, and Olaf Spinzek. So, the title is Pros and Cons of Executable Neural Networks for Deep Embedded uh, Neural Network Systems. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Matthias. Uh, I am from UNOTBROC. I'm currently pursuing a PhD over there. I just started over the past year. Before that, I actually had a master in computer engineering on, uh, on the Federal Technolo University of Technology from Paraná in Brazil. Uh, but in my focus before was in robotics, so I recently migrated to this area. So yeah, probably most of you have more experience than me. So yeah, in this talk, uh, uh, the neural networks is based on a prototype that we're developing that's based on exact data structures. So trying to make the inference with new networks faster, we, and I will just show you how this works. But first, the table of contents in my presentation. I will start with a really brief introduction, and then I will start explaining the approach. What exactly an exact table of data structure? I think most of you are probably aren't familiar with it, since it's not that uh, know of a concept. And then how we use this concept in our approach with the neural networks. Then an, uh, a primary evaluation of uh, what we've done, and then finding conclusions. So introduction. Since uh, we already had in the past presentation explaining that the edge device are on the rise, the market for them increasing, and they are really limited in computational resources such as RAM, processing power, energy, and yeah, especially in the IoT context, they require uh, low inference times when performing uh, inference and in using neural networks. And then there are lots of techniques to improve performance, such as quantization, pruning, specialized hardware accelerators, and ahead of time compilation. Our approach is one of uh, ahead of time compilation. Of course, it's not the first one. Uh, frameworks such as MicroTVM, XLA, and Glow also uh, provide the ahead of time compilation. And uh, I'll, I'll offer other functions of graph optimization, operator fusion, translation, and specific optimizations. And I can't say for sure if any of them try to do something like what I've done in this uh, research, because they are all under uh, heavy development, uh, recent heavy development. But yeah, I don't, uh, to my best of knowledge, no one does it like this. And uh, yeah. So what exactly is an executable data structure? So it's an approach to uh, optimize the traversal time of data structures in general. So instead of you uh, traversing an executable data structure using for loops or recursive functions, you try to store both the data and the structure inside the node-specific code. So for each node of the data structure, they have the uh, own code of how to traverse itself, it comes out of self traversing. This eliminates intermediate function calls, lookup in, lookup look operations, and this results in improved, improved efficiency. So, yeah, so to make it clear, I prepared a really simple example of a really small binary tree with just three nodes, one root node, one root node, uh, left child, the right child. And uh, each one of them uh, has uh, two attributes, V and S. And let's say you prepare a function that traverses it and returns a value. So this could be any function, but let's say something like this. Uh, for each for the node itself, it returns the value V times uh, input uh, provided variable by, by the user F. And then the sum using the same and some function for the node on left child and right child, but instead of just f pressing f plus x. Yes. So yeah, norm, this would be the normal implementation, just a recursive function. So what can we do with with executable structures? We basically create a, one function for each one of these nodes. So 
each node knows how to traverse the satellite. Node C and B would just have to return the value V times F, while node A, since it had uh, both itself and values of each out, will return V times F plus the call of B and C nodes. And what's the benefit of this approach is that the compiler is able to optimize the final code. So when we expand this function, and all these values besides the F, which is user provided, and are no at compile time. This means that the uh, compiler can uh, just reduce its operations and reach this final uh, bank over here. And basically, compiler see the uh, how to the A uh, structure as something like this. So yeah, it just reduces drastically the uh, inference, the runtime because it doesn't have to learn function how all the uh, variables are actually constants on, on the memory, on the structure so, you know, of the node, so it just gets much faster. So how can we apply this concept to neural networks? So here is a simple neural, uh, which everyone probably knows by heart by now. So, we have the, the neuron, the uh, inputs, the weights and bias, and the formula is represented like this. So for each neuron, you have the, the sum of all the inputs times the weights plus the bias passed through the integration function. So when we use a much later perception architecture, for example, uh, the most common way of uh, of uh, executing it, uh, programming it, is using a product like this. This is what TensorFlow Lite uh, Micro does when it's not using any kind of uh, fancy instruction, essentially. So it's this really, really base uh, form. So yeah, you can't avoid using a for loop and having to load each one of the values for the weights, like. Yeah, the filter value. So it has to fetch every value from memory. It doesn't have anything in the structure. So we we want to keep this uh, this formula and, and this way as much as possible the code. So in our approach of that NN, we just uh, replace everything from this with a uh, generate code that's fully expanded like this. So each one of these weights and biases are no at compile time, and the compiler can uh, optimize it. So yeah, it generates more code because each one of the neurons will be one line of code with multiple values. But overall, we theorize that it would improve the speed of the execution of the inference of inference call. So we did this also to the convolution layer, which uh, each convolution is represented by a dot product. So like in principle, like micro, we can find it in multiple nested forms like this with the internet over here. So for this one, I actually uh, tried at first to expand everything from the kernel in each one of the function calls, but then the code just explodes in size too fast. So I just had the uh, one function for each kernel so this is something like a three kernel. And uh, right here, uh, in this example, in the previous one, I, I didn't put the part of code with the activation function and quantization operations because that would just make the presentation more complex. But yeah, here in the, the function for the convolution kernel expanded. And then for each one of the outputs, you have one count for, for the most kernel with the values from the uh, specific uh, specific elements already in line in code, uh, and the weights and by results in line in code. So then we went through the evaluation for this primary prototype. We just had the uh, polyphonic layer, the uh, convolution to the layer and the multiple layer. 
So to, for the evaluation, we prepared a pipeline. We uh, received a tensile light model as input, and with by base of this information layer, by its weights, we generate a C++ code. We just use the standard C++. So it's just a Python script that uh, loads the trans code and generate this code. We uh, quantize it in, in the H and quantize it so it can be compared more closely with that pro -like micro and in the form of channels last. And the output is just uh, two files, another file with the weighted biases, and the inference file, uh, which is sort file with that those <coughs> inference function calls that I showed before. The compilation just doing uh, done with the old three from max optimization and the output an old file and then I it can can apply it on the target device uh, the main loop and perform hundreds of inference so I can uh, get an average of the uh, how much time to each inference and yeah I'm going to for time to perform tests so for evaluation. I I just run it on the two devices I had available, which one is my laptop, it's a true architecture x86 and i7 1185 and an STM uh, 32 from family F4. So the STM 32 has an ARM Core XM4, 128 kilobytes of RAM, and 512 kilobytes of flash, and 180 megahertz of plot speed. And for evaluation, I had to use a Linet 5 uh, natural architecture, which is quite simple. It's not really used currently that much, but uh, I will just explain why I had to use that. Uh, so uh, I just, uh, like I said before, I only had the quick method convolution to the max full layers implemented. So that limited my, uh, the, the options of uh, architecture that I could choose for testing right now in this first time. And yeah, here is the Linux fiber architecture. It's just an input of 28 by 28 by 1. And uh, two convolution with max full layers and three fully connected layers again. So yeah, here are the results. First, on, on the Intel, and the performance was better. In blue, you see the exact number network, or exact NN. So and we were around three to five times faster. And here we have a violent plot to show that we are consistently faster and that it doesn't have that much variation in runtime. And on a standard two, it's surprising the difference is much bigger. Right? We have each other to seven times faster than the F light. So uh, on the binary size side, uh, the data and VSS section. Uh, ah, this is uh, this uh, difference uh, bars. Each one corresponds to uh, one size of input. Since I uh, didn't have that much architecture to choose I tried to uh, make some variation by changing the input size for the Linux architecture. So we have a uh, 20 by 20, 28 by 28, and 32 by 32. And on uh, the Intel, there is light difference and slight bigger. And that's uh, the only reason that I didn't use the same for the STM32 is because of this, the text section. So the text section was the point that we had the biggest issue with the approach, which the exponential increase on code size, which is that means the code increases drastically with uh, as soon as you have a bigger input or more layers. And while the, with a dynamic approach, so it's just like micro, the code size basically barely changes. On the data uh, BSS, which are normally on the run, and then there isn't that much difference. And uh, actually the exact is kind of overestimating the, the amount of run that's needed because I just need to run for the uh, input and for the intermediate activations. So I uh, overestimate and this could be lower actually. 
but for the test session, it's really like this, and we can all mitigate these uh, results. And finally, the compilation time. So, uh, since the compiler has a lot of optimizations and more to do with the general approach, and the code is quite larger, then, of course, uh, the time that it takes for to compile is increased also quite quickly. For the TF like micro, uh, the, there is also barely any change. So here are the values uh, of this table, since it's a lot table, and uh, it can be a bit difficult to interpret the values. So, so here we can see that as I can increase really fast in completion time. So yeah. As conclusions, so with this approach, it's some that we uh, could have a really big reduction in trans time of, of up to seven times compared to state of art interpreter with TF like and micro, but this should be taken grand salt because uh, TF like micro is a dynamic interpreter. So I was planning to evaluate it with other uh, ahead of time compilers, such as micro TVN, but I just didn't have time for it yet. And uh, so as a first part, could prove beneficial for uh, micro control units and other uh, energy efficient devices because normally this uh, the main limitation is the on the run side, not in the flash side. So we, uh, probably if it's a small network, it, it would still fit on a small micro control unit, such as this. And yeah, of course, with a better inference time, then we would uh, have uh, really good benefits in energy side and for the transportation too. So yeah, and the main down, uh, downside is the exponential increase in memory size and compile time. And then for future work, uh, plan to compare it with other frameworks that have well, well ahead of time completion, like LVM, as I, I mentioned before, and add support for other architectures and other layers. Because yeah, right now, I, so we can use uh, at least the well-known architecture that is uh, ResNet. But I think they, they should focus on other architectures and uh, also implementing common optimization such as pruning, because this approach could heavily benefit of pruning because it would reduce the number of uh, the code size drastically problem. And profile which types of layer most benefits of this approach because uh, maybe there is one kind of layer that could have the most benefit, then we can use certain kind of hybrid approach and maybe get a better of the two words or something like this. So yeah, that's it. Thank you, Mateus. Amazing talk. So are there any questions from the audience? If not, maybe a quick one. Okay. So, so Lenin is uh, pretty small, so do you think like how how would this fair with, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so. At least present 18 years. <laughs> no, yeah, so we use Lenin because other, if you try any, any other attacher, the code would increase quite exponentially, especially because of the fully connected layer. So I think probably the fully connected layer is, isn't the best one to use the approach, but yeah, there's something that we should plan to test, see how far we can go. We try to use something like uh, uh, with input size of uh, 200 by 200. And uh, even for the compilation, uh, I run off out of memory. So yeah, it just takes too much of the compiler when reaching this, the, the size. Any more questions? I would be actually interested, I have one question. So how do you think your method or your approach would scale across other hardware, like bigger uh, microcontrollers, smaller uh, uh, microcontrollers, or other hardware targets? Do you have a gut feeling for that? Yeah, right now it's kind of hard to say how well we could scale, because yeah, like you mentioned, uh, in bigger networks, it's still probably like a challenge for us because uh, this increase in the code size, it's really limited. Like STM, it's, it's not 
the smallest microcontroller, but it's not the big one. So I think we could get a small network to run, but I, right now I'm not sure if it will be a really bigger one. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Anybody else? Otherwise, let's give them the perfect. <laughs>